Okay, for this next part, I've pre-made this little melody right here. Some of you might recognize it as it's the main chord progression from Jelly Castle. This is what it sounds like. So take a look down here at the very bottom, which we can enlarge by clicking and dragging up on that bar. This is where we can change the velocity of the notes in the piano roll. So you should already know quite a bit about velocity, as we covered it when we went over the step sequencer in detail. The piano roll works in pretty much the exact same way. If I tweak this velocity, it changes these corresponding notes. The beauty of the piano roll, of course, is that you can have multiple notes in one spot, whereas with the step sequencer, you could only have one single note here. However, if I want to change this value, and I click on it, you'll notice that all three velocity values change. If you want to change just one value, you have to select the note, and then you can work with it. Alright, so when you're working with velocity in the piano roll, it's pretty simple to control. If you left click, it changes that particular point that you're on. If you right click and then drag, it locks the velocity into a linear pattern. This can be pretty handy if you want to make something gradually get louder or gradually get softer. For now, let's undo that, and we'll leave it the way it originally was. Let's suppose that I really like the velocity, but I want the piano to just play it a bit quieter. It would be a huge bother to go in and change every single one of these notes, plus it would be hard to follow the exact values that you want. Instead of doing it like this, you can simply highlight all of your notes, and then press Alt-X on your keyboard. This brings up the piano roll level scaling, and it allows you to tweak all of your velocities at the exact same time. It also works with the other parameters as well. If we tweak this multiply knob, you'll notice that they all scale up relative to each other. So now we can set it to a lower velocity, press accept, and listen to how it sounds. So it's quite a lot softer and more subtle. If that's the feel that you want, then you definitely want to lower your velocity. Just like the step sequencer, this isn't limited to just velocity. If you go up here where it says velocity and click it, you can change it to a whole bunch of different options, such as our pan or the note fine pitch. So if we mess around with this, it'll sound absolutely terrible. but you can mess around with the pitch and maybe do some cool stuff in there. All right, let's put this back to about the normal size and let's play around with this melody a bit using some of the more fun tools that are in the piano roll. If you go back up to the top left, you'll see this little wrench icon. Go ahead and click that. This brings up our tools menu and there's a lot of good stuff in here. I'm not gonna cover everything in this tutorial because it would take a very long time to go through it all, but I will go through some really cool features. First, let's take a look at Quick Legato. Let's pretend that our notes right now looked something like this. It's not a huge bother, but it would be kind of annoying to have to go line them up manually and get the right spacing and stuff, and it's just kind of slow. Rather than doing it that way, let's see what happens when we use Quick Legato. So I'll select these notes and then press Ctrl L on my keyboard, which is the hotkey, and you'll notice the gaps immediately disappear and get completely filled up. This can be a huge time saver if you're working with a really long melody with a lot of dead space in between the notes that you want to fill. Let's go back to the tools menu and take a look at chop. Chop is pretty self-explanatory. It simply chops up your notes into smaller note values. Now mine looks pretty crazy right now because I have this time knob all the way to the left. Let's increase that a little bit. And now let's press play. Kind of a cool effect, although I kind of prefer to just do it manually. Also, make sure you turn off group notes, because watch what happens if I leave it on. If I choose accept, and I try to change just this particular note right here, it moves the entire row, which can be kind of frustrating if I want to make changes of my own. Let's go ahead and undo this chopping. Let's select this chord right here, and let's zoom in on it. Pay close attention to the very start of the chord. We're gonna go up to the top and back to our tools and let's select strum. Now you'll notice immediately that it's spaced out these three different notes. What this tool does is it tries to emulate how a guitar would actually play in real life. Picture if you were playing a guitar and you strummed a single chord. Your pick would first hit the bottom string, then the fifth string, 
and then the fourth, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly what's happening here. You'll notice first the bottom note plays, then the middle note, and then finally the top note. We can play with these knobs right here to further adjust the timing of these notes. Let's go ahead and close this panel. Let's zoom back out, and let's go back up to our tools. And the last one we're going to look at is this flip tool. Right now, both flip horizontally and flip vertically are selected, so it already sounds pretty drastically different. Let's press play. Let's turn off flip vertically, and now let's press play again. This is the original melody, but it's just playing it backwards. So it's really simple to use, but it does add a lot of variety really quickly. Alright, let's go ahead and close that. And let's imagine that we want to take this melody, and we want to write a bass line that accompanies it. So let's close this piano roll. And now let's go to our bass, right click there, choose piano roll. So this is where we would start making our bass line. But there's one problem. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of forgot how that melody goes. I could start clicking randomly. Maybe... Something like that? But I don't know for sure if that's going to work. That might sound awful. Even though I can go up here and switch between the two patterns, it's still going to get kind of confusing, and it's going to take a lot of back and forth until I get it right. Fortunately, FL Studio has a really handy feature built in. So go to the top, and click this drop down arrow, and now click on Helpers, and go to where it says Ghost Channels. Click this, and you'll notice immediately that now you can see all of the chords from FL Keys in the background. They won't make a sound because, as you can see, they're grayed out. They're just there for reference. So now we can see that I was actually totally off, so it's a good thing that we do have these ghost channels. This bass line shouldn't even start on an F, it should start on a C-sharp, as that's the root of the chord. These would also be on C-sharp. These would go to D-sharp, and we would continue it to follow these notes. So that wraps up pretty much the majority of major things that the piano roll can do. Don't forget though, there's a few extra things that you can play around with that might give you some pretty neat results, so make sure to mess around in here. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Don't forget, if you're interested in trying FL Studio for yourself, there's a link in the description to save 10% off all ImageLine software. When you're ready, click that next button and I'll see you in the next lesson.